Hi, welcome to episode six of the Porsche Talk Show, all your latest news and information from the world that is Porsche. So today we're going to be talking about records set by the Taycan at the Nürburgring, um, a special one-off car designed by Porsche and Pixar. What have you got for us today, Joe? A little bit of testing that Porsche's done with hydrogen, not in reality, but sort of computer-based. We've also got um, information on Porsche trying to be um, CO2 neutral by 2030. Some information on that. And of course, we cannot go with this episode right talking about the latest 911 GT3 RS. So let's get into it. So the first bit of news is the Taycan Turbo S on the Nürburgring. It's Porsche breaking records again. 7 minutes and 33 seconds, which is sort of up there with the GT products and some of the other top racing cars. So pretty impressive. Mm. Slightly altered, but for altered with a kit that is going to be available to customers. So I um, think only available in Germany at the minute, but we're looking at bringing it out to the rest of the market shortly. Um, gives a bit of alteration to the uh, to the Taycan. Also gives you a special uh, new PDCC to it as well. So, um, yeah, quite interesting. Uh, taking the result back from other manufacturer that we will not mention, <laughs> which um, which is great and especially shows that the, the Porsche are really pushing the performance of the electric vehicles. Yeah, so it's a um, performance kit currently only available in Germany, but hopefully we'll see it in the UK in the future. The biggest difference is stickier tyres, so it's like a different compound of tyres. Um, they're still road legal, fully road legal tyres, but far better suited to performance driving, so especially on the track. And uh, a recalibration of the chassis dynamics in the vehicle, so as Richard said, the PDCC, just to help the car, uh, in combination with those tyres, achieve better performance, and that, that's been proven on the track. Yeah, so it's great, that, and we're obviously getting the results again, and it'll be interesting when I talk about in the future um, 911 GT3 RS later in the um, programme to sort of see what results will come from that and on the Nürburgring, because that tends to be like what is the staple of showing that, like, the performance of a vehicle. Um, this particular test was done on the 20.8 kilometre track, I know, with the other manufacturer they will not mention, they talk about the two different tracks that are available to do the, the tests on. So yeah, um, it'll be interesting to see what, how this the sort of goes in the future with further electric vehicles and other testing that uh, Porsche are doing. As we mentioned, you're talking about the hydrogen testing that we've been doing, not in the real world Nürburgring, but slightly altered virtual world. Yeah, so Porsche have done simulation basically of a hydrogen engine. So a hydrogen power plant fit to one of their vehicles, simulating it doing test laps of the Nürburgring um, to see how it would perform, how the fuel works with current components, if they need to change the turbocharging on the engine. And they've had some positive results, um, not as simple as just swapping the fuel over, but it is definitely feasible. So whether it will be something that Porsche look into investing further, they wanted to try and make sure, because obviously hydrogen at the moment is not really on the performance level. So they're trying to sort of see if they could get the performance of like a 440 horsepower petrol engine, weren't they? Sort of just sort of see mm. if they could get the equivalent performance using this hydrogen technology. But it's great to see that Porsche are just putting all their eggs in one basket. That obviously they do the petrol, do EVs but that if hydrogen does become a viable option, Porsche are already investigating into it. And hopefully if, if that is the route that goes down, then Porsche will be well on it. And the next Porsche could be a hydrogen powered one. So I'll have to see how that development goes. Um, I just wanna have a, chat, a bit of a chat about uh, a one of one Porsche. So Porsche um, have had that connection with Pixar, obviously the Cars films, everyone remember that Sally was a Porsche in that film, um, but they've done something great for charity. So they've created a one of one vehicle working with Pixar themselves um, and created a Sally Porsche, which went up for auction recently in America at Sotheby's and raised $3.6 million, which I think is astonishing <laughs> yeah. yeah for like a one vehicle uh one of one of one car so that's yeah and i actually great. really like the look of this car so sort of the front and rear bumpers are painted normally there's certain sections which are left 
sort of in the plastic trim, they're actually painted. Uh, bespoke wheels, a few other bits and pieces with the badging, but yeah, I actually think it looks a really nice car. Over three million dollars worth, maybe not, but it's gone to a good cause. So yeah, yeah all for charity, and obviously whoever's got that has got a, a one of one. There'll be mm -hmm. another another one like it, so it's a very unique Porsche to, to have in your garage. So obviously, big news that we've had in the, since our last show was the GT3 RS. Um, which has been fully announced. We did a whole video on it. Uh, me and Joe digitally had it in the showroom and did a bit of an overview for it. Um, I will put some clips of that now so you can have a little listen. The new 992 GT3 RS was just unveiled. It's got a four litre naturally aspirated flat six engine producing 525 brake horsepower. One of the biggest key features of this car is the aerodynamics. So it's got a massive rear wing, which has active aero. So the actual wing itself has got um, actuators on and that can open and close the wing. So to go through a bit more of the engineering, uh, the engine, the aerodynamics, how they've came up with this absolutely amazing car, and I'll pass you over to Joe. Thanks for that, Rich. So it's finally now launched the 992 GT3 RS. And to look at the car, you can see clearly aerodynamics have been heavily optimized on this new model. So over 250 hours of wind tunnel testing at the Visac facility, that is a state-of-the-art wind tunnel that Porsche have. So they know what they're doing when it comes to aerodynamic. So as you can see, a enormous six foot wide wing on the back of this car. For the first time we've seen on a Porsche, active aerodynamics with a DRS option. So you push a button on the steering wheel and this limits the drag of the car by opening the rear wing, increasing its top speed. Also, when you're heavy or hard on the brakes, the wing will increase downforce to help with grip and uh, the braking performance. So if we just compare it quickly to the 992 GT3, that is a phenomenal car. It is producing three times the downforce of that vehicle. It shares the same engine, but with new camshafts. So it makes its peak power right up at the top of the rev range, revving out to 9,000 RPM. 15 more horsepower, so a maximum of 525 PS. It has a shorter final drive on the PDK gearbox compared to the GT3. This is due to the larger wheels and a 29 millimeter wider front track. So having a look at the front of the car, you can see it's quite aggressive with the styling. So the actual central vents in the bonnet, Porsche have moved the radiators. So instead of there being two radiators, there's now one central radiator. This hot air is then channeled away from the car so that it's not then sucked in by the engine at the back. We've also got more active aerodynamics on the front. So where these radiators used to be under the headlights, there's a void. There's an active flap down there. So this module has two diffusers on it. It sits in sort of the front of the wheel arch and has a movement of up to 80 degrees. This can increase or decrease the amount of downforce on the front axle, and this works in unison with the rear wing. No stone has been left unturned, so by channeling this air through the wheel arch, Porsche have actually optimized the shape of the wishbones, so even the wishbones themselves produce downforce up to 40 kilos. We're seeing a host of carbon on this car now, so even the doors are carbon, and there is the option for the Visat pack, which will give you the clear carbon bonnet, carbon roof, carbon roll cage, which is quite incredible, six kilograms lighter than the steel counterpart. Part of the Visat package is the magnesium wheels, which allow you to save eight kilograms, which is a massive saving in rotational mass. Porsche want the aerodynamics on this car to perform at their optimum at all times. The front suspension's had a redesign, so it pivot, the pivot point is a little bit lower on the front suspension. This means the car doesn't dive as much on the brakes, meaning the car is leveler or flatter at all times, meaning the balance on aerodynamic downforce front to rear is kept consistent. On the inside, we've got a slightly different steering wheel with what looks like almost four sport chrono dials. These offer the driver a range of adjustment, which is absolutely incredible. So you've got rebound and compression dampening on the front and rear dampers, which can be controlled. You can control the stability control, so you can have that on, off, or in like a halfway house. And the traction control can be turned fully off, otherwise you've got seven stages of traction control, so you can allow just the right amount of slip for the conditions. You've also got settings for the rear differential for the coast and under power. So this is the lock of the differential. You'll get a real feel for this when coming out of the corners on power, or when breaking into the turns. 
So if you combine all these functions together, this allows the driver to really dial the car in to their specifications and how they want the car to feel. Porsche make true driver's cars, but this car now we're seeing gives the driver the option to really customize it to what they want and the feel they want out of the car. The rear vents on the back, on the rear wheel arches that used to feed the engine, they're now not just for show. Nothing is fake on this car with the aerodynamics. These now channel the air sort of through the rear of the car and out the side of the diffuser. So yeah, absolutely stunning vehicle. Mm. Cannot wait to see one physically at the center, but uh, I think Porsche are definitely pushing the boat out with this, this vehicle. Yeah, definitely. And to answer our previous question, it does have the four litre engine, so very similar to what's in the GT3. But different camshafts now, so it's producing that extra 15 PS. Um, but big thing on this car is the aerodynamics. We still don't know the lap time for the Nürburgring. There's some difficulties getting a clean lap put together with the weather conditions we've had out there recently. It's been really hot, hasn't yeah. it? So I think, yeah. But it is coming. Um, Andreas was questioning, would it be as quick as the GT2 RS? He didn't think so, because that car has so much more power and torque. Um, but this car has more aero, so that's the most similar thing we've got to base it on, but it will be interesting to see, see yeah, how it performs. Yeah, can't wait to sort of see what that result is, just for curiosity's sake. Mm. So it's going to be an immense machine, whatever the result. So, yeah. Um, we obviously talked about Porsche looking into hydrogen power. Uh, obviously, we do the EVs with the, the Taycan. Um, they're also looking at trying to create a carbon-neutral supply chain by 2030. Um, so Porsche, uh, any supplier that's supplying parts and things for Porsche uh, now has to be any new projects going forward done from renewable energy and try and do renewable sources um, and Porsche are helping these companies along with that. So and that's great that it's not just thinking what can Porsche do, but helping the suppliers and the supply chain. So the whole production of a Porsche, hopefully by 2030, will be carbon neutral, which I think is a great goal to have. Yeah, definitely, because there's a big push for EV vehicles, but the actual goal is to, to lower the carbon footprint. And that's a nice thing Porsche do already with the Taycan factory. So that's trying to be a zero emission factory. And um, so it's powered fully by renewable energy. So it's the trains that, the train line that, that delivers the cars in and out of the factory. Also in the carpets in the Taycan are made of recycled material. So there's a lot of things that people don't realize that goes in the, the background, um, which helps support this continuous goal. Yeah, and I think like obviously every company um, at the moment is looking into what they can do, and especially for an automotive brand that's normally people are sort of associate with the CO2 emissions. It's, I think it's really great that Porsche's on that forefront trying to sort of design cars and obviously the, the production and also then the supply chain to be sort of good for the environment also trying to be carbon neutral which is great so as always please like and subscribe if you like this content we also do let's talk porsche which is like car reviews we've got some other interesting series coming up like the porsche top five which will be coming soon which is our top five porsche cars through history or porsche motorsport or anything porsche related also got the tech tips which will be coming which is talking about how to do things with your Porsche in terms of pairing your phone, setting up your Spotify to work, adding your account into your Porsche car, um, all sorts of stuff with that along with like the My Porsche app. So if you like all this type of content, please like and subscribe, click the notification bell to be told when the next episode's up, and we'll see you next time. Yeah.